Hey guys, I'm Jax and this is my spoiler review for Season 2, Episodes 1, 2, 3 of The Rings of Power. Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power is finally back and oh boy does it get straight into it with our favourite sympathetic sexy Sauron. That's right, this show goes full prequel and gives us a prequel to Season 1 of this prequel show and it's utterly delightful. We see Sauron as he was before he was hunky sexy man Aragorn type and so slightly less younger and slightly less sexier although I suppose that is subjective. Sauron gets seized by all of his orcs and recast Adar for reasons. I don't know. He says some stuff where he's like I want to do the thing I want to do and they're all like we don't like this because we're orcs and we don't like that because apparently we're not evil and we're just guys. We're just very, very ugly guys and we don't like to murder. Even though it seems like in season one, they loved to murder. But they don't like what he's selling and so they Caesar him or they Jon Snow him. Either or. And then we get one of my favourite parts of these three episodes where Sauron goes on a little bit of a flashback golem style kind of crawling through the gutters, if you will, or crawling through the caves and tumbling down a mountain. We see him turn into just goopy blood, and then we find out that he was able to survive due to magic, whatever, who cares, and he was some kind of tangler slash symbiote situation, just rolling about like a bunch of grotty, mucky worms that really just look like if Tangler from Pokemon was a symbiote or had a symbiote on him. That's what Sauron is. And that's a bit of fun and I loved it. Then he finds a human and he's like, I like the cut of this jib, but less old lady and more young sexy Sauron. Then we see the giant monster again and that's fun because I love giant monsters and I love the bit with the giant monsters like coming at him. He's like, gonna eat Sauron? And Sauron's like, mate. <laughs> Sauron and he's like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mess with that and then the same monster just like bolts the other way <laughs> that was very funny maybe the funniest bit in the whole like three episodes I am gonna be honest was that the start of my disappointments yes did I want him to ride that sea monster like some kind of Aquaman Sauron situation of course I did but any type of sea monster I'm a fan of <laughs> I'm a big fan. And then we cut out to the present day moment where we met young sexy Sauron at the start of season one of Rings of Power and they do the classic, awesome, epic, cold open situation where you've got one character looking at another character and we've been doing a flashback leading up to that moment that we knew they were leading up to and they look at each other and the music swells and you're just like dilla, dilla, dilla. smash cut to opening titles. What was my next note? I feel like this season should have a subtitle, like some shows do back in the day. Less frequent now, that's for sure. But it should be The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. Sub second subtitle, Sympathetic, Sexy, Sauron? Wait, no, let me retone that. Sympathetic, Sexy, Sauron. Yeah, that's it. It's all about the tone. So the main focus of these first three episodes is that young sexy Sauron is now out in the open. We know who is the young sexy Sauron. Is it the young sexy Gandalf character? Who's definitely Gandalf? Sorry, I mean the young sexy mysterious unknown wizard. Who could it be? It's Gandalf. He's quoted Gandalf. And so now that Sauron is out in the open, he travels into Mordor and he faces off against Adar and he's all like, let me leave, please. And it's like, you walked in there, bro. What are, you, what are you doing? I know that there was a moment at the end of season one where you had to have young sexy Sauron fully revealed with Mount Doom and it's the shot from the movies and the volcano's doing a, it's erupting and he's all like, got the cloak. He's like, oh, I'm a smoldering sexy man. Oh, is it going to be great that Sauron looks exactly like this as a sexy smoldering man and you're just going to love it forever. Isn't that going to be great? So he goes into Mordor and then he's like, please let me leave Mordor because I only came in here for a shot, like to end the season, like a really cool cliffhanger shot. But yeah, can I leave? And Adar's like, get out of here, man. And he unleashes one of the hyena uh, wags on that old man, the old man that like did the big key that erupted Mount Doom. We all, we all have fond memories of that old man with the key that made Mordor. 
Fun stuff. But this is when Young Sexy Siren's plot gets <laughs> juicy. He goes and he meets with Cellarella Bembo. Celadem Dembo. Celery Bembo. Cerebro Bembo. What? <laughs> Cellar, Cellar door imbo? Cellar door imbo. Cellar door bimbo? No, that, can't be, no, that is definitely not it. Mm. Cellar brimbo. Cellar brimbo. Cellar, cellar, oh my god. Cellar brimbo. And so young sexy Siren goes and meets Cellar brimbo. And Cellar brimbo, I feel like, is kind of the key to making this season feel kind of exciting and dangerous and interesting. I don't know, maybe it's just that I understand what the show is and that it's not gonna be Lord of the Rings but a show. This isn't gonna make me feel like Game of Thrones did in seasons one to four, but with the Lord of the Rings material. But I've, I've come to peace with that. Like two years ago when the show came out and I didn't like season one, I rewatched it recently. I had a lot of fun with it. Like, I don't know. I do not like how Mount Doom was created. I don't like any of that. But for the most part, it's a bit of fun or whatever. Like, who cares? I'm still hating things unless they suck, which so much stuff sucks now. But I just kind of have a bit of fun with this. But I feel like something that was kind of not necessarily lacking, but something that's really a big, strong addition to this season. So Stella Brimble feels like this really strong main kind of heroic character at first. Like he's like this wonderful forge maker. He's the master of making things. He's an artist. He's like, what if science and artistry combined to make the greatest elf of knowledge and wisdom? And what if that really smart artsy scientist was like, oh, I can make something that's the most powerful, awesome, cool thing in the world. And he's just like, doesn't think about the consequences. He doesn't think about the possibility of being tricked or manipulated. We got little glimpses of it with Halbrand and Cellar Brimble right at the end of season one, but having just full fledged big moments, big conversations, like the whole crux of these first three episodes is their partnership and them creating these rings for the dwarves and for the men and him doing it knowing that the high king of elves doesn't want it to be done and all of this stuff and whilst we just fully know like i think at that point in season one i knew knew but i didn't know he was young sexy siren but now that we know now we know that he's just fully manipulating him i just find it really fun and satisfying that he isn't just like doing classic kind of you know, tra traditional classic. I don't know, like, it isn't him just being like, boop, 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 and doing some kind of magic spell on him and like touching him from the back when he doesn't notice and being like, you'll do as I say, Celebrimbo, because I'm an evil wizard. Tap. He just kind of walks up and he's like, hey, bro, you know how you made those three like super dope rings? Like super dope three elven rings, right? They didn't even like send you a text to like say thanks. Like they didn't even like say thank you. He's just like, I'm the king. I'm going to wear it. And it's super powerful and cool. They didn't even thank you. You're like the craftsman, bro. You're like the smith who did it. They're kind of lame, right? Just oh, those, those, ugh. they don't even respect you. I don't know. What do you think about that? And he's like, how dare they? I'll make a million rings. And I just love this really authentic, realistic, vain, ambitious, arrogant genius who's like what he didn't even like say thanks i'll do i'll do it again i'll prove everyone i'm the smartest greatest man that ever lived he's just a quintessential classic mad scientist and i bloody love that i love it i love how the manipulation and the trickery is essentially him standing about and just like nudging and pushing and like not like sorry no not pushing but just like nudging and like twisting moments and just like saying this the right type of word and kind of like he like gets the person he like looks at them and goes all right this guy's abc so if i say d it's going to trigger all these things and send him on the right path and that's how he manipulates him rather than him just being like i'm a magic dark wizard because he can do whatever he bloody <laughs> made it rain so the guy would come out and do all these things that's kind of big overblown stuff but where it really comes down to making the rings he really just like twists them in a way very subtly. And all of that I just found really, really fun, really enjoyable. All of that stuff I loved. I absolutely love the idea as well, where he's like, hey, Galadriel said not to trust me. And because it's a TV show and we need to kind of figure out a way that you'll trust me and we want to keep the actor around, I'm not just going to be a new face. She didn't tell you like why. And his reason is I lied about who I am. I'm not a king. Guilty as charged. 
I'm a wizard. I'm essentially a god. And he just buys it because he does a bunch of parlor tricks with the fire and stuff. I think that's kind of funny. I think it kind of says more about Celebrimbor than it does about Sauron doing like kind of lame, not lame, but it's pretty cool. I'd be pretty shocked if someone did that in my living room. But like the fire goes up and down and he turns the lights on and off essentially. And I don't know, it's just pretty funny that it's like pretty like basic wizard tricks and wizardry tricks. And the guy's like, oh my God, he must be an angel from heaven or a wizard from heaven, I guess is what they get in this universe. But he doesn't really think about too much because he doesn't really want to. He doesn't care. He wants to create these dope-ass rings. And all of that I just find really deeply compelling and interesting. I love it all. Young Sexy Sauron is pretty cool. Actually, I have one critique. One massive, dangerously negative critique. The elvish hair. The whole elvish look. Not a fan. I feel like Young Sexy Sauron really, he got his vibe down, he got his look down with the human hair, with the um, budget Aragorn in season one. And I respect that. Just the, the, the beard, the, 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 the hair, just looking like a man, I suppose. And I don't, I'm not trying to sound elfish and racist towards the elves. <laughs> no, not at all. I just feel like that guy had a certain drip. Why'd I try and say a young word like that? I don't even know if that makes sense. I just feel like he looks super cool as a man. And now as an elf, kind of looks like a guy doing cosplay. Kind of feels like a guy in a show where I'm like, nah, I don't know. Did you miscast this elf that you're doing? Oh, he's in disguise. Mm, okay. I don't know. I just kind of feel like my enjoyment of him so far was like half vibe, half look. And I just don't like it now. And that is subjective, but... This is a review and everything I've ever said is subjective. And by that, I mean the objective truth. Oh, also Sauron implies that he's going to enslave all the orcs when he takes over and that the one ring like enslaves them. And I guess when I think back to the movie, I haven't read the books. Sorry. I'll get to them one day. I promise. I know. I know. I know. I know. I'll get to them one day. I promise. So young sexy Sauron implies in this that he's going to like enslave all the orcs. And like that's what the one ring does. And I guess if I think about when I'm like one ring to rule them all. I'm like, oh, yeah, no, okay. No, like, yeah, enslave, enslaved. Yeah, sure. But I always felt like the orcs just like liked his vibe. And they just like saw the guy's armor and they're like, yeah, that guy. That's our guy. That's our guy. Who else is going to be our guy? This dark wizard. It's not going to be the elves. Everyone's super racist towards us. This one guy's not. But... He hates them too, or they hate him, because they did a big Caesar slash Jon Snow on him, so... I don't know. They don't like him either. No one likes him, so he's gonna just enslave them, and then enslave everybody. And that's kind of horrible, and kind of interesting. It's kind of interesting that the orcs are, like, just a different race, and, like, they're not inherently evil. They have babies, and they love their babies, as that one has got a baby. He's like, I love my baby. I'm paraphrasing. He doesn't say that. He kind of goes... <laughs> You know, because orcs are disgusting. And so on one hand, I love the idea that orcs are more sympathetic and more interesting and more compelling. And on the other hand, I guess everyone was just super racist towards orcs. They weren't just inherently evil. They said they were, and they were just like, well, just look at them. And that carries some dangerously dark implications. That being said... Just like, look at them. Just like, ugh, look at them. Just, ugh, disgusting. Like, if I'm going to be honest, if orcs just like lived in our society, ew. I'm kidding. I'm joking. If orcs existed in our real lives, like the movie Bright, a movie everybody remembers exists, I would be not orc phobic. I would love the orcs. Why? Because if an orc stood next to me at a bar, I am... <laughs> deeply attractive i am Im i'm like two thousand times more attractive or am i oh no see if a lady i was trying to hit on at a bar like pick the orc over me i probably i probably have to kill myself in fact i'm now seeing where all this orc phobia is coming from i didn't mean that that's not a true thing they're pretty gross though, right? Hey guys, Editor Jax here, just coming back into the video after <laughs> watching some of that uh, in the editing room. And by that I mean right over there. There's, no, there's not a separate room, it's, it's all in one room. Uh, but I just wanted to say that all 
comedy. D, uh, it was a bit. It was a joke. I am in no way trying to spread orcphobia. I am not trying to say, you know, anything like uh, like imagine the things I say about orcs is like how Eminem speaks about everybody. It's just a joke. Although it's hard to tell with him, isn't it? It 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 is hard to tell. He he sounds very angry. That was a bad example. That was a bad example. So let's talk young, sexy Gandalf's plot. I don't know. He like walks around in the desert for a bit and then does a big tornado. Moving on? <laughs> no, no, no. I am kidding. <laughs> you somehow got to this part of the video. You know, a little bit of a rant, a little bit of a ramble. Let's get into it. So young, sexy Gandalf. And by that, I mean dark, mysterious, potentially anybody. He could be Sauron. Wait, no, he can't be Sauron. He could be one of the blue wizards. He could be Saruman. He could be just some guy. So young sexy Gandalf this season is different. How is he different, you ask? Oh, <laughs> he, he talks. Like a lot. Like he's super talkative now. One might say, he talks now? He talks now. It creates a very different vibe for the whole Gandalf and the Hobbit situation. Or, sorry, the Halfwoods. I'm going to call them Hobbits or Budget Hobbits. I'm, no, no to the Halfwoods thing. Not, not, not a fan. It just, you're doing Hobbits. But somehow you feel embarrassed to call them Hobbits. Even though Hobbits are the best. But you've made Hobbits the worst. And like season one, I feel like young sexy Gandalf. Well, maybe it's not Gandalf, but it's definitely Gandalf. Young sexy Gandalf and the Budget Hobbits are the weakest element of the show in season one. And I feel like the same is said for here. They're not in it that much, but the same can be said for season one. I love the gravitas and the feel and the mood for young sexy Gandalf. He's super cool. I like him. I loathe the hobbits. The budget hobbits, I, I just not for me. The humor doesn't work. It doesn't land. Just their whole kind of thing just doesn't really work for me. It's really, really off. The biggest issue though, this season, which I don't think was that big of an issue last season, it happened a couple of times, and every plot line is like guilty of this. The showrunners just seem, all the writers I suppose, just seem to love to do this. They can't help themselves. But also I guess it's just like a subject of being a prequel and that it's meant to be fun, maybe I guess, but it comes across as like really frustrating, kind of embarrassing at times. Like, this isn't the best show ever, but it's definitely not the worst thing I've ever seen. But the worst moments are when they remind you that you could be watching Lord of the Rings instead of this show. And that is all the member-bearing moments. Those lines or moments where they're just like, it's the same as the movie you love. And I'm like, yeah, I know, I know. Oh, do I remember Lord of the Rings? Yeah. Yeah, I remember Lord of the Rings, my favorite movies. I've only seen them 200 times. You don't have to recreate exact lines of dialogue. You don't have to recreate scenes. You don't have to recreate shots and moments. It feels cheap. It feels lazy. Just, I mean, I don't even know what to say. It just feels so derivative and creatively bankrupt. And it feels so hollow and shallow. And it just feels like yucky. It feels yucky. Let's list them. So we got the, we've been here before. We're going in circles when they're lost wandering about. We got the Easterlings, but now they're Westerlings. I think they're in the West, they said. And they're like looking for the hobbits and like, where are the hobbits? And the hobbits are hiding and the magical cloak is hiding them like a rock. And the Easterlings are like, oh, I've got a funky mask on and I'm, I'm looking, but I can't see them because of the magical cloak. And then we've also got the capturing of Gollum recreated as the capturing of a budget hobbit, budget Samwise Gamgee. Yay! We thought we got rid of all the hobbits except for one. Now there's two of them. Yay! But instead of capturing Gollum in a really fun and clever way, there's just like a rope on the ground. A very visible rope like on the ground. It's just like... <sighs> you make it too easy to mock. I almost don't want to. It's just so stupid and dumb. I just... But they trip the, the person chasing them and it's not some kind of spooky, scary creature or some kind of interesting new character we're going to meet on their journey to do a, whatever they're doing. No, it's just budget Samwise Gamgee and she's like, I'm along for the ride too. And I'm like, why did you not just come at the end of season one then if we're doing this? This doesn't really feel like it makes sense and is necessary. How did you even follow them? Whatever. Who cares? The most interesting thing with young sexy Gandalf and his budget hobbits is that we are going to meet some kind of dark, evil wizard played by Mance Raider himself, Caesar himself, 
which is fun. Someone got Caesared, but then Caesar from Rome is in this show now as Dark Evil Wizard. I thought from the promotional stuff he was just going to play Saruman. That does not seem to be the case at all. So I guess he's a blue wizard, and they're going to imply that he's one of the blue wizards, and that this is the other blue wizard. Because as far as I'm aware, there's two blue wizards? Don't quote me, but quote me. Who cares? Whatever. I'm pretty sure there's two blue wizards, so they're going to imply that that's the thing for season two, and it's going to be a classic... Is he Sauron? Is he Gandalf for season one? It's like, oh, which which is which blue wizard? Because they probably have names or whatever. But like, who cares? No offense. But also, it's Gandalf. It's Gandalf. He's young, sexy Gandalf. It would be crazy if it wasn't. Like, why did he say Gandalf's classic line, follow my bloody nose, you stupid little hobbit, or whatever he said, you know, in season one? Why does he just, why is he Gandalf if it's not Gandalf? You know? One thing that I did find kind of strange is that like the dark Saruman, well, non-Saruman guy was like, Hey, evil lady, witch, Eminem character. You know that chick that looks like Slim Shady? And she's like, all like, I'm alive again. And something, something, the wizards, she says words of her. And it's like, okay, you resurrected her. Cool, fine. She has a cool vibe. You know, Slim Shady, but a wizard. That's fun. But like, I don't really understand why she's working for this guy. Wasn't her whole thing in season one being like, you're Sauron. Our whole mission is to find you Sauron. We love you, Sauron. And it wasn't Sauron, and they're like, oh, well, shit. Well, now she's working for this guy, and they don't seem to be part of Sauron at all. Do they? I feel like there was a flag at one point that had a mark, and I'm like, that looks like the Eye of Saruman. But that can't have been right. Was the Eye of Sauron? Maybe they're all working together? But the way they talked about Sauron was like, that doesn't seem like they're working together. And so then young, sexy Gandalf is like, tornado, and it gets out of control, and he's like, no, the budget hobbits, they're dead. But they probably won't be. I imagine. I'm just, I'm just like, I'm taking a, a swing, a big swing, a shot in the dark. That'll be totally fine. So a Zildor's introduction into the season is that he gets a, an Aragorn Brigo horse saving scene from the clutches of young sexy, wait for it, Shelob. That's right. We've got young, sexy Gandalf. We've got young, sexy Sauron. We've got young, sexy Galadriel. Young, sexy Elrond. What I did not expect was young, sexy Shelob. And I'll be honest. Not as sexy as you might imagine for a young, sexy prequel where everyone's young and sexy. Kind of just seems like a disgusting little spider. But Azildor gets captured by Shelob and that's a bit of fun, I suppose, or whatever. I don't know. I feel like the timeline's... It's that spider's 2,000 years old, but the timeline's broken? Because now he's saying that, I'm like, well, Zildor isn't 2,000. Or is he? I don't. I don't remember enough. I just rewatched the show and just went, it's a bit of fun. I don't know. Swords and stuff. I like swords. I like fantasy, but they're like, it's a magic tree. we got to put rings on to save the magic tree! And they do, and then they're like, Whew. we're all going to have to leave this land to a better land that we love more, but we didn't want to do that. But we're wearing rings now, so the tree is fine. Which means we're fine. I love it. I love magic. So elf guy is back. Yay, the elf character. But blue dress lady, his lover, is not. What happened? She dies off screen in between seasons. Off screen, in between season death, in a show that like is fine with recasting. They recast Adar. What did she do to get so cancelled? So impossibly cancelled that they don't want to bring her character back as a different actress playing that same character. Wild. Love it. Nothing else to say about that plot line. Why? Because the video is too long. And finally, we got about five minutes of Numenor politics or whatever. And it's essentially just like five guys who are like, Hmm, should we be a bit treasonous? Should we do some traitor talk? Here in this local tavern, this local pub, just having a drink where anybody who likes the queen can hear. Just screaming our treason out to the crowd at this local pub filled with drunks. What the hell? Luckily, it doesn't matter because they rock up to the coronation and they're like, look at this big magic eight ball. She uses it. She's magic and a liar. And they roll it on the ground and they're all like, she sucks. And everyone's like, she sucks. And then the big guy, the big bushy beard guy, he's like, it should be me. And then an eagle rocks up and it goes, it should be him. And then everyone cheers. And I kept waiting for the eagle to say something and be like, guys, Stop cheering for that guy. I'm, I, I clearly heard about the coronation that was for this lady. And like, I heard about it weeks ago or whatever. And I flew over here at perfect timing to like celebrate her. I'm only, I'm, I'm just here standing because I don't want to get in the room. 
because like my wings it's gonna be crazy for me to fly out you know i'm just gonna stand on the outside because i'm a big eagle and this guy just walked up to me i am in no way like endorsing this big bushy bearded man this treasonous monster and the blind lady i'm with her obviously but he doesn't speak like the eagles i presume i thought the eagles were gonna speak in this because they speak in the hobbit the book but they don't speak it just goes And then the big bushy beard guy's like, yes, yes, mm. eagle chose me. Did anyone else forget the eagles were super big? Like when they're like, well, if an eagle rocked up, that'd be pretty crazy, bro. And then the eagles real big. I'm like, that's right, it's Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm.